What's good? We're back for another episode of some rookie draft profile action. We're getting a little further down the list here, getting closer and closer to having a a decent viewpoint of what's going on. But tonight we're going to get to Terrace Marshall Jr., not to be confused with Terrence Marshall Jr. So he's 6'3", 200, turns 21 in June, so currently 20. Obviously got the LSU Pro Day, so we'll get some height and weights from them coming up shortly. Uh, this is kind of the the forgotten man, if you will, from that LSU prolific offense from a year ago. He's from Parkway High School in Louisiana, so a fairly local grown guy. He's a five-star recruit. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> I think it's our first star, first five-star recruit. Uh, we haven't done uh, Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith officially from, from these rookie profiles, but all the other guys, yep, they're all four stars, the first five star. So he was n- number one receiver in L.A., or yeah, L.A., Louisiana, and the number three wide receiver in U.S. of A. All right, Overall, so pretty good. Huh? I think uh, 13th maybe prospect nationally, so pretty pretty high marks for this young whippersnapper. Then there's the metrics. Oh, those dirty metrics. They're decent here, though. So we got the Dominator, 46.5%, the 92nd percentile. (laughs) Pretty decent. Pretty decent there. 92 percentile, normally good. Uh, The breakout age is 19.2. So the 86th percentile, good percentiles for uh, the metrics that that people like. And that's a really impressive breakout age considering the talent that was around him that he was competing for targets with in that season that he broke out in. Right. Again, strong offense that they put together. Strong quarterback, strong play caller for sure. Absolutely. So we haven't gotten through all of the wide receivers here. Uh, We've obviously gotten through the top little bit here, but there's still a good list to go. But right now, to me, Marshall has one of the best values of wide receivers going for the rookies. Uh, And I could see him maybe being more valuable quicker than one of these top wide receivers. Uh, So in order to follow along with what we're doing and end up seeing how we end up ranking these guys and and putting them and would take them in a mock draft, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So it goes right to your fingertips. Cause once we have that all figured out, we're going to be doing rookie mock, rookie mock, rookie mock, rookie mock to just go ahead and hammer this thing out get all of our, get all up in our feelings, get out of our feelings, get in our cups, get out of our cups. You know, we'll do a drunk one. We'll do a sober one. We'll just, you know, how you, how you really feel about these rookies. And, and uh, so you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So you make sure that you follow along with all of those. So you can really end up valuing uh, Terrace Marshall. So let's, let's get into who this guy is and, and what his career was like. Uh, We'll start in 2019. We talked about that prolific offense there. Uh, He was battling for visibility with the likes of Jamar Chase, who's going to be probably the first receiver taken in rookie drafts, probably the first receiver taken uh, off the board in the real NFL draft. And then Justin Jefferson, who obviously had a great rookie campaign with the Minnesota Vikings there, uh, should have obviously been a higher uh, first round draft pick last year. Clyde Edwards, Alaire uh, went to the Chiefs, had a good rookie season, despite what a lot of people want to say about him. Was, they hate was, him. Was pretty CH good value right now. Go try and pick him up. Um, so, you know, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, CEH, all being a big part of that historical season. Uh, and when you go back and watch those games, you can see Marshall is beating his man. He's getting open, just really isn't getting the looks. And, and how could he with with those names? You know, Burroughs locked into Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson and checking to CEH. Um, so this leads him to maybe not being all in on every snap. You can see him taking plays off. You can see him to being a little lethargic at time. He still puts up pretty good counting stats for 2019, but like there is some knockout knockout there that you can see that, you know, maybe sometimes he isn't putting a hundred percent effort, but you know, a guy like that who is a five-star recruit has been touted his whole career. And all of a sudden he's, Hey, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and not getting open. It'll start to wear on a guy. And I think we've, we've found tracked down some, uh, interviews and such with him kind of commenting on those things. Yeah, he uh, he was asked in the offseason coming into 2020 what his mentality, you know, coming into the season, knowing he's going to have to be the number one guy. And, and he said he needed to be more aggressive with everything 
and take it all to another level. And to me, I kind of heard like, I got to quit taking plays off because it definitely does look like he's a bit lethargic at times and does look like he's not running hard and not, ma- you know, because you've got in all 19. these studs on in 19. Right. And, and and you've got all these studs that, and, and you know, the plays drawn up for this guy or that guy. And, and, and you might not, you might not run it to fruition every time. And, and he, it, it seemed like he kind of knew that and, and wanted to make a change coming into 2020. And then you saw him be that aggressive uh, monster. It was pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, he's got a big natural frame that looks like could still be shaped, shaped into a unique physique. Ooh. If you will, uh, it looks like he has room to kind of shape that body a little bit more, even already being six, three, 200. Uh, but he, Right. He looks, he looks so much, he looks bigger than that on the field. Like I read somewhere where that he was two Oh nine at one point, but I I, like, and and now they're listening to me 200 and we'll find out what it is at the pro day. But man, his play is is just, it's grand in stature that he's, he looks, he looks huge out there. He is your typical big man because he can get vertical and do big man things as we'll get to here. But he, he also isn't your typical big man. I think he offers a lot of versatilities. And, and how you use him on the field with the departure of Justin Jefferson and Jamar chase in 2020, you saw the slot percentage climb up tremendously while becoming more of the focal point at LSU of their passing attack here. So in 2018, he's at 22.5% in the slot 2019, he's at 35.2% in the slot. And then in 2020, he's at 82.2% in the slot. So just becoming a lot more of versatile, move him around and being a focal point of what LSU wanted to do. Now that offense takes a huge step backwards in general from who's throwing the ball to guys on the offensive line to the pass catchers, all of those things uh, take a big step back. So, you know, they, they get creative and Terrace Marshall accelerates uh, and, and really stands out being able to be used in the slot. He increases just about every counting stat in five less games. He takes his yak from 158 yards to 309 yards. He takes his yak per reception from 3.4 to 6.4. He takes his yards per route run from 1.59 to 2.91. That's good for 21st in the NCAA. Uh, He has more receptions, 48 more yards, 731 better yards per reception, 15.2. Um, and the only area where that went down was TDs, which went from 13 to 10, again, five less games. So he's out there balling, being able to be used in different ways. And obviously, you know, he went down, it was five less games and he's went from 13 to 10, but we've, we've hammered it a couple times. That was maybe the most prolific offense in college football history there. They threw 60 touchdowns. Like it was crazy. Right. And, and as soon as you start watching the 2020 tape compared to the 19 tape, it's so evident the ball that's coming to him is is just it's not the same. You know, right. they did not have anywhere close to the type of quarterback play that, that that Joe Burrow was bringing to the table. And he was just putting the ball on the money so often. That dude is a complete stud. But for Terrence to come in here with five less games and still still score 10 touchdowns it's and, and increase every counting stat. I right. Mean. And, and I think I think we should highlight this yak a little bit more because, you know, that's part of the reason why you want to get him in the slot is to manufacture some sort some short touches because this dude is a monster it, like i don't know i don't know if we want to put him up for class yak or yak of the year necessarily no, not, absolutely not but. but man dudes don't it doesn't look like it's fun to tackle that man he can bust off and break some tackles and make dudes look silly and, and he's aggressive he did i just really enjoy watching him play yeah, to me, all that leans into the versatility of not being your typical man, typical big man that I was just talking about. To me, it shows you more that he isn't just a big outside target, which, again, he happens to be very good at. But he has some fluidity and savvy field awareness of, you know, he can line up anywhere. He knows what to do and how to win. Uh, you know, I'm not saying he's an elite, fantastic route runner by any means, but it does show me that you can do more than just, hey, line him up outside and throw him the ball. He had the fourth most receiving touchdowns from the slot in 2020 with eight. Um, and, you know, again, to get back to the, being the typical prototypical big man, if you just want to use him that way, he's pretty damn unstoppable in the red zone, regardless where he lines up. Since 2019, he had the third most red zone, red zone touchdowns. 
Um, and then some more of that big man nastiness to his game where he has that my ball mentality contested catches in 2020, 11 targets, nine reeled in for 81.8%. That's a ridiculous percentage. Nine that's, of 11. That's the third best in the country with at least 50 targets. Um, and then over the career, he reeled in 41 of 25 contested catches. So this he guy reeled in 25 of 41 contested. Catches. Sorry. Yes. I had that a little backwards. My bad. Gotcha. I would say I'm dyslexic, but I'm just an idiot. Um, <laughs> so he can do he can do so many things. And like you said, yeah, OK, you just moved him into the slot and he was kind of playing that big slot thing. And, you you know, you could scoff at that a little bit, but I look at it as versatility that he can do different things. He's not just this, this stiff, stuck big man that can only operate on the left or the right outside the hash. But he shows you that in 19 that he can do that and score 13 touchdowns and and threat and be a vertical presence like because he is pretty fast with some built up speed. I'm not saying he's running these crazy wild quick routes and just busting your ass like Justin Jefferson was from the slot, but he was doing work from the slot. And like you said, the yak went up and he he does look hard to tackle. It's not just like, oh, he caught the ball in the middle of the field on a manufactured play. And and now he just goes down like he he is able to make moves. He is a big man with a little bit of sizzle to himself after he makes the catch. Uh, so I, th- I think there's a lot to like about Terrace Marshall here. Yeah, absolutely. I got to hammer home that that deep speed again, because that's 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 like the last little icing on the cake is like he does have some deep speed. And when he gets going, he's what they call a long strider and he gets going. And I'll be surprised to see what what he runs at his pro day as far as a 40, because I bet I bet it's going to be better than people are giving him credit for. Yeah, now the the drops did increase in 2020 to seven. Um, so I don't love that. But the QB play, like we mentioned, was fairly poor. They they had a revolving door there. They were trying to figure it out. This guy was good for one game and then he came in and, you know, they just had some ups and downs at the quarterback position trying to figure it out. Obviously, you lose Joe Brady to the Carolina Panthers, who was their OC or passing game coordinator or whatever you want to say. Um, and that's a huge loss. You saw Carolina Panthers come in immediately and have three wide receivers going for over a thousand yards. Um, right. And I don't, right. and this, and you know, you could say it's just, a, these guys are just products of the system, but these two guys, the two big receivers from this already went onto the league and weren't a product of the system. And Terrace Marshall was quote unquote, probably the best prospect out of those guys. So to see what could happen here um, is I think an outstanding value uh, for, for Terrace Marshall here. So the ADP wise where he is right now, the rookie ADP from DLF has him at rookie ADP 11. So 11th second last pick in, or second to last pick in the first round. And then the rookie rank from their experts is right at the same, right at 11. So some continuity there. That's about where everybody's sticking him. Now I've been, I've been saying that there's going to be some good value here and I'm not necessarily saying that it's, Hey, I'm not saying that you, he, I'm taking him over Bateman or Rashad, uh, or Rondell Moore or any, or Waddle. I, I'm not saying that quite yet. I'm just saying like all of a sudden there's good value at the end of the first round where I think this guy is just a really good pickup for your team. I'm excited to draft this guy at, you know, I've, I again, don't have it quite figured out, but pick 10, 11, somewhere in there. Whereas maybe I wasn't as excited to pick at the end of the first round coming into this rookie season. Right. This class is certainly not touted as much as the last class, and the last class was so much fun to pick into well into the second round because those were first round talents. And it seemed like getting towards the end of the first round, it wasn't going to be as fun. And then you watch a guy like Terrace Marshall who doesn't have a ton of hype around him. I mean, he's getting some respect there in the ADP forgotten but, man, but there's no hype. There's no, you don't hear, he's not in people's mouths, you know, he's not right. blowing up. He's not unobtainable, you know, right. And, and he does bring some excitement to the end of the first round. I think that's a great point. Yeah. Uh, And then I just want to wrap this up with, you know, we've been talking a lot of rookies Um, to me, the rookie draft, uh, just to hammer home on more some value stuff like the rookie draft is all to me is all about avoiding landmines. Um, For example, you may not quite get the one four value out of the player that you picked. Maybe the one seven guy ends up being better than the one four guy you pick. But as long as that one four guy isn't a complete bust and he's usable, it's not the absolute end of the world. If he just sucks and can't can't play at all, 
that really stings. So what you're trying to do here is, is find the value of the guys and avoid taking those landmine picks, either trading back or trading. Hey, I don't like these guys in these three slots here. I want to trade back and, and avoid those guys. Hopefully somebody else sits on those landmines and now I can move back, gain some value either next year or with some of my other picks and, and continue to, to just keep trying to avoid those picks. You know, I think too often, you know, people will be like, oh, well, you know, we, you picked him at one four and, and the guy at one six and one seven were so much better. So, you know, that guy's just overrated and he's a bust and that sucks. It's like, yeah, it's, it does suck a little bit, but as long as he's not an absolute landmine, it's OK. Like you just want to not come out of the rookie draft with a guy who isn't usable. Obviously, you want to come out with as many studs as you fucking can. But that, you know, that's just not it's, all the drafts aren't last 2019 rookie drafts. Uh, there's typically are a lot more landmines to avoid in the first round. Last year, there really wasn't all that many. Uh, if you if you dodged Henry Ruggs and and you picked up T Higgins, you know Jerry Judy right now isn't looking so great. You dodged Rangers him not and grabbed so great. Jefferson right there. You know, right, right. right. I if was trading, trading back. If he traded I, back from where people thought Judy was supposed to go to where you got Jefferson, right? Mission I, accomplished. I traded back twice in a rookie draft. Uh, and and dodge taking Rager and Judy because I wasn't feeling them as much and grab Jefferson and Higgins and I'm ecstatic. Right. If he drafted a little earlier, Keyshawn Vaughn was that landmine that got overhyped. Zach Moss landmine that got overhyped. Antonio Gibson, if he drafted a little later, he's you're putting him on a pedestal right now because that was fantastic. So um, Terrace Marshall is not a landmine, is what you're saying. I I, I don't believe so. Now, I, I feel like he can come right in, and I don't, I'm not saying he's necessarily going to be an alpha dog number one type of guy but i feel like if you pair him with it with a good number one and he could be your number two guy not to say that he can't end up being a stud number right. one because there is definitely some there's some he's you a five-star guy that, there's you know there's juice there right and he uh, carried but, that lsu offense as the main only main focal point and put up 10 touchdowns with no quarterback he doesn't seem like he's going to be needs to necessarily be super duper system dependent to be uh decent but obviously to be great, ever, anybody needs to be in a, in a pretty good system or just an absolute dumpster fire where it's garbage time all the time. But that's typically not the most sustainable situation and very hard to predict. Uh, right. So anyway, that's Terrace Marshall versatility, Ed forgotten man, but play can play as a big man uh, kind of has everything that you're looking for for me, especially at the end of that first round. Right. G good metrics. If that's what you're looking for, good stats. The game is phenomenal looking, and the value is seemingly right there with it. So, right. stock up Terrence Marshall. Let's go, baby. Thanks yeah. for joining us, everyone. We'll be back with some pylon for your pleasure. Peace. Peace.